Hello and a warm welcome to everyone uh, who is watching this with me. Uh, can you just give me two minutes if I'm, I'll just check if I'm live. So this is like a, a ritual now every week coming and talking to you guys. It feels so lovely. Uh, can somebody please drop a hi or a hello uh, and let, let me know if I'm live. Yeah. Yes. All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to yet another session. First of all, wish all my fellow endo warriors a very happy endometriosis awareness month. March is a month wherein we try to bring in more awareness about this disease which uh, is so prevalent. I, I, this, is, this is just an endeavor, endeavor from my side to create awareness for everyone across the world. So in September 19, 2017, Lady Gaga had to cancel her tour. And she revealed that she was suffering from something called as fibromyalgia. So fibromyalgia is one of the most common chronic pain conditions. And this disorder affects an estimated 3 to 6% of the world's population. Although fibromyalgia affects both men and women, approximately 90% of fibromyalgia sufferers are female. So what exactly is this condition? Fibromyalgia is, a, is an elusive and a very confusing diagnosis. The condition is thought to affect the way the brain actually uh, processes the pain signals. The, what happens in this disease is that the brain amplifies the intensity of the pain and causes chronic debilitating pain. According, this is according to the Mayo Clinic. There is a widespread pain, a common feature that is present in a lot of chronic diseases, is thought to be caused by an underlying disease that triggers a state of central sensitization, where patients develop a pain hypersensitivity because of repeated pain episodes. So the brain actually gets oversensitized to that pain threshold and, and it actually starts giving signals which amplifies it actually blows up the amount of pain that the patient feels fibromyalgia also mimics many other conditions including arthritis lupus and cancer which is why it is it often takes years to get a diagnosis there is no definitive test for it and it is diagnosed by a process of elimination when other conditions are ruled out so for years it was even considered as a mental health disorder. It was only in 2007 when medication became available to treat the symptoms and side effects this, this condition caused. But still, we don't have a permanent cure for fibromyalgia. In people with fibromyalgia, the brain misunderstands everyday pain and other sensory experiences, making the person extremely sensitive to pressure temperature, be it hot or be it cold, the bright lights, noise, as compared to other normal people. Now the question is, why is fibromyalgia common in females? Because fibromyalgia peaks in women during the reproductive years, the female hormones are believed to play a extremely important role in higher incidences and severity of the disorder. Many women complain of this kind of a pain, which is worse during or before their periods. Research has shown, has found that people with fibromyalgia have abnormally low levels of hormones, serotonin, noradrenaline and dopamine in their brains, which causes, you know, mood, mood disorders in people suffering from fibromyalgia. But where does endometriosis factor in? Well, a cross-sectional survey was conducted by the Endometriosis Association in 1998 of 3,680 patients with surgically confirmed endometriosis found that they had higher rates of fibromyalgia, that is around 
versus 3.4% than general population, which is like actually big number. A decade later, four organizations, the Chronic Fatigue and Immune Dysfunction Syndrome Association of America, the Endometriosis Association, the National Valvodynia Association, and the TMJ Association collaborated to form what is now called as the Chronic Pain Research Alliance. This, put, this, identified, this alliance identified six conditions in women that commonly overlap. These included both fibromyalgia and endometriosis, as well as interstitial cystitis, which is sometimes referred to as painful bladder syndrome, irritable bowel syndrome, TMJ, chronic fatigue syndrome, and vulvodynia. So it is crazy that, you know, so many conditions overlapping each other. It is very obvious that the diagnosis is going to be like really crazy and it'll take a lot of time for a person suffering from such condition to get diagnosed. Some people with fibromyalgia may experience certain symptoms on a regular basis. However, the pain associated with fibromyalgia tends to fluctuate and worsen when the symptoms temporarily increase in maybe either number or intensity it is called as a flare-up. Flare-ups can happen without a warning. It can catch you at the time when it should not. But a lot of times people understand when the flare-up is going to happen. And especially it happens when a person is stressed or under a lot of pressure. A flare-up can last anywhere from a few days to a few weeks at a time. So, now let's come to what are the potential flare-up triggers? What causes the flare-ups? So certain factors may trigger fibromyalgia flare-ups, like they're very small things, but they do induce, uh, they do create a flare-up. Certain changes in diet, hormones, physical or psychological stress, as I just said, change in schedules, sleep pattern, temperature or weather, and treatment. Stressful events, surgery, or accidents can make fibromyalgia symptoms really bad. Flare-ups can also happen due to a lack of sleep or doing too much or too little of exercise. Now, we know why it can happen. What exactly is fibromyalgia? But what does a person having fibromyalgia feel? The main symptom of fibromyalgia is a widespread pain. It causes pain everywhere in the body. The condition causes pain, stiffness, tenderness of the muscles, tendons and joints. The individual symptoms may differ from one person to another, but and symptoms can vary from in, in intensity from one person to another again. The intensity and the duration can come and go depending on a person to person. So what exactly are the symptoms? Pain throughout the body, particularly the back and the neck. Extreme sensitivity to pain, bright lights, smoke and certain foods. Stiffness when staying in the same position for a long period of time. They, keep, they have to keep turning and tossing because they cannot stay at the same position because there is so much of stiffness that happens that it is unexplainable. The muscle spasms, there is extreme tiredness or fatigue. The quality of sleep is hampered. There is a lot of trouble in remembering, learning, paying attention to things and concentrating, which is referred to as fibrofog. There is slow or confused speech. The frequency of headaches or migraines is like really high and there can be irritable bowel syndrome. Someone with fibromyalgia may sometimes experience clumsiness, dizzy spells, feeling too hot or too cold, painful periods, restless leg syndrome and numbness or tingling in the hands or feet. Daily pain and sleep prevention can cause problems at home and at work. The stress of coping with a condition can also lead to anxiety and depression. 
I think these are like so many symptoms in one disease that imagine a person going through this and going through this for years without being diagnosed. There are certain, it is not just fibromyalgia which is there. There are some comorbid conditions which are associated with fibromyosis, like gut dysbiosis, SIBO, hypothyroidism, autoimmune diseases, endometriosis, adrenal insufficiency, IBS, tinnitus, bruxism, TMJ disorder, restless leg syndrome, just to name a few. So how is fibromyalgia diagnosed? Though there is no accurate way to diagnose fibromyalgia, as I just said, but there, a blood test determines if you might actually have this condition. This specific test identifies certain biomarkers in the immune system, particularly when it comes to cytokines in the blood cell count. Having an abnormally low cytokine count can indicate fibromyalgia. It can just indicate. I'm not saying that it's a sure shot test, but there is an indication. Currently, this test is approved by the FDA, but is not yet considered as a sure de determinant of fibromyalgia. Since there is no accurate laboratory test that can detect this condition, so it is up to the doctor to recognize the symptoms and exclude other conditions. One way that the doctors try to narrow down the diagnosis of fibromyalgia is by exerting pressure on 18 small spots located throughout the body. And these spots are called tender spots. Your doctor will make a diagnosis based on two criteria. One is you have experience, you experience widespread pain for longer than three months. The second is you have other symptoms like fatigue, memory or sleep problems. You may also have to see several doctors before getting a diagnosis. One reason for this may be because the pain and fatigue, the main symptoms of fibromyalgia are also symptoms of a lot of other conditions. Doctors try to find or maybe zero in on fibromyalgia and other health problems that are causing your symptoms only by elimination. How is fibromyalgia treated? The treatment for this may include medicine to treat your pain and counseling sessions with a trained counselor who can teach you different skills and techniques to better control your pain and cope up with the situation. Easier said than done. Though the treatment is limited, but there are ways in which you can cope up with this condition. These are these certain things that I'm going to tell you now are just uh, just some techniques in which you can try to cope up with the pain and fatigue that you go through because of fibromyalgia. The first thing that you have to have to do is de-stress very cliched thing to say but stress may trigger fibromyalgia symptoms reducing stress can help you decrease the flare-ups minimizing stress can improve your quality of life some proven stress busters like yoga exercise sleep and meditation can help you take over will help you actually improve your quality of life Breathing deeply and exhaling slowly can also help. Or keep in mind activities that you enjoy doing. That will make you feel better. Maybe, maybe cycling, maybe dancing, maybe just playing a game of football. Whatever you want, you know, just do what you like doing. When the stress strikes, do one or two of them and you will feel better. These are all tried and tested things that we have been doing or rather I have been doing. So I think you can give it a shot. The second thing that you can do is jot, jot it down. Jot down the points. If fibro fog 
is hurting your focus or memory. Keep a pen and a paper ready. Make a to-do list or even a to-say things list to help you remember topics you want to talk to, maybe your friends, your spouse, your family, or anyone about. Keep shopping lists, your friends' names, important phone numbers, and addresses in a notebook and carry it with you. The third important thing that you need to do, and which I probably have been emphasizing in almost all my sessions is, exercise regularly. Getting regular physical activity is extremely important. Pain and fatigue may make exercise and daily activities harder to do. I completely understand because I go through it myself. But studies show that for many women with fibromyalgia or even for that matter endometriosis, regular physical activity can reduce the pain. Any activity, even walking around your home or neighborhood, can help relieve your symptoms. Start at a very low level and slowly increase the amount of activity that you get. Regular low intensity exercises such as walking, water, warm water exercises are one of, are, is one of the best treatments for fibromyalgia. It can help decrease pain and stiffness, reduce stress and it may increase your sense of control over fibromyalgia. You may also sleep better and if it is something which you can do, please talk to your doctor or your physical therapist about a good exercise program for you. The next and very simple thing to do. I'm not telling you anything which is rocket science. These are all uh, things which you can, can do and can do at ease. The fourth point that would really help you with your condition is taking hot showers. This is one thing which I love doing. Soaking in warm water or a hot tub can relax tense muscles, reduce pain, and help you move more easily. If it is difficult for you to get in or out of the of, of the bathtub, what you can, can do is you can take a stool or a chair and take a sauna or take a shower sitting on a stool. Let the water do its work. Moist heat will increase your endorphins, which block the pain signals and help you sleep better. The fifth one is avoid caffeine. Try decaf. Caffeine may compound stress both physically and psychologically. It stimulates your heart and central nervous system and can increase the nervousness and anxiety and insomnia. So decaffeinate to de-stress. For better night, night sleep, avoid caffeine from late afternoon onwards. You have to watch out caffeine not only in coffee but also in chocolates and some soft drinks and teas. Sixth one is the use of a miracle spice. Spice up your life a little. Sprinkle turmeric in your food. You can add turmeric in your sauces, your drinks or you can take capsules. You can google out golden milk. In India, it is something which is extremely common, but otherwise you can just Google golden milk, you will get all how to make it, and you have uh, capsules also available. It has proven anti-inflammatory effect, and it's a way to add flavor in, a food, in your food in a healthier way. The next one, again, something which everyone knows, but very few people do. Have some me time. Fibromyalgia can pose unique health challenges and make life really complicated. So make time for yourself. Every day as a part of your treatment, do something for yourself and take out that little time. Even if it means taking out one hour for yourself, please do that. Maybe, you know, lose yourself in a hobby Put on some music, rest, sleep, whatever you want to do in that me time, please do that. It will bring more balance to your life and it will help you fight stress. It will boost your energy for the things that you need to do through rest of your day. 
the next one is to make your work life better so is work leaving you exhausted and in pain if the answer is yes it's not going to help you design a flexible plan that works for you and for your boss ask about working from home part time or setting your hours for a earlier or a late or later in day so that you can be more productive at office rearrange your workspace for comfort and easy accessibility a telephone headset a keyboard tray or other products may help put less stress on your body the next one is again something which i've been telling day in and day out in my sessions talk about it talk because till the time you don't talk your your folks would not know they are not god they will not know what you are going through fibromyalgia puts stress on you and those who are around you communication is critical critical is the word for it don't try to put a very happy face always though it is something which people with chronic uh, diseases make a habit of putting a happy face in whatever situation they are in but try not to do that every time your loved ones also need to know what makes your symptoms worse plan talks for your best time of your day try focusing on one issue and look for solutions and don't be afraid to ask for help from family from friends from other other co co fibro warriors or a counselor the next thing that you have to do right from today is learn to say no exactly learn to say a no fibromyalgia is sometimes called an invisible illness you can look absolutely fine but you might be feeling bad within you you might be in a lot of pain and and you must be in your lowest phase and it is something which is not visible people may forget that you need to prioritize and pace yourself so it is okay to say a simple no and stick to it this will make life a little simpler for you again coming to the next one is to make your bedroom a sleep sanctuary getting enough sleep is a uh, is of utmost importance to people generally also and more so with people going through conditions like fibromyalgia endometriosis or any other chronic disease most adults should try to get 7 to 8 hours of sleep every night but fibromyalgia can make it hard to fall asleep and stay asleep talk to your doctor about any sleep problem you're having and ways to treat them your doctor may recommend go you going to bed at the same time every day and getting up at the same time every day this is called sleep hygiene they may also ask you not to drink caffeine alcohol or eating extremely spicy meals just before bedtime and also not taking daytime naps if you are not getting enough rest set the mood in your bedroom for sleep reserve the bed for sleeping and keep the room dark quiet cool and distraction free keep regular sleep hours and ban computer and late night television watching instead wind down have relaxing music or have a warm water shower keep a daily journal keep tracking keep a track of events activities symptoms and mood changes that which are actually causing the fibromyalgia this will help you take charge of your life it may also make you aware of when the symptoms are starting and over time what may be triggering your symptoms then you can work to eliminate those triggers and learn to cope learn those coping up strategies to lessen their impact so making a journal is something which is going to help you in the long run to exactly know what all are triggering your you know the symptoms and 
how to how to cut them off the next thing is join a support group support groups can play a very important role in lives of people suffering with chronic illnesses whether in person or online they also offer a space a safe space for you to talk with others and may share your frustrations and concerns support group provides emotional support information and tips about coping with this disease there are certain other things uh, which are supposed to be helpful trying complementary or alternative therapies are said to help women with their symptoms uh, like pain so what what exactly are those alternative therapies so alternative therapies like physical therapy massage myofascial release therapy acupuncture release relaxation exercises tai chi yoga these are certain things which can help people deal with uh, fibromyalgia something else what i realized is if you try to you know take control of your life by what i generally do is trying to do affirmations every day having faith in myself and trying to make a note of everyday things every day what, making a note of what makes me happy every day is something which has been helping me uh you have to find your own your own little helpful tips which will make which will take you you know longer in life which will help you live a better life a little pain free life i would not say that these things would make you absolutely pain free but it will surely help you live a better life a better quality life so hope this session was helpful in making you aware of what exactly is fibromyalgia and maybe in some ways help you live a better quality of life uh let me just see if i have some questions um i don't think i have questions questions um, no i think i don't have questions i can't see any questions coming up but uh, but i'm glad we did this today and uh, thank you everyone for joining me uh, and uh, looking forward to another session coming week uh, in case you have some topic that's in your mind you can just put it in the comments i would be very happy to talk about it anything that i can do to help you you can connect with me thank you and have a lovely evening ahead bye bye